Welcome to today's program, NPL at Home, the photographs of Bill May. I'm Tom Ankner, the director of the Charles F. Cummings New Jersey Information Center. Before we get started, I just wanted to encourage you all to fill out your census forms. Filling out the census is one small but very important thing everyone can do right now to help our city and our communities. If you haven't done so yet, please go to my2020census.gov and fill out the brief questionnaire. The information you provide affects funding for health care, transportation, your local schools, and many other needs. Remember, my2020census.gov. It is safe, secure, and confidential, and you have until the end of September to fill it out. Today's program is another of our NPL at Home sessions, designed to introduce people to exciting and interesting items from the special collections of the Newark Public Library. We have a treat this afternoon, a special guest, Bill May, photographer, musician, educator, joins us to talk about a collection of photos he donated to the library a few years ago. Usually these NPL at home sessions are just me or someone else go, showing you a collection on the, um, on the digital archive. So this is kind of interesting that we actually have a guest to speak to, to speak with. Um, we ask that everyone leave their camera and sound off. If anyone has a question for Bill during our talk or a comment to add to the program, please type it into the chat box. Now I want to begin by properly introducing Bill. William W. May has been photographing the world's most famous jazz musicians for decades. He also taught music to children in Newark for 40 years and retired as the school district's director of visual and performing arts. He now works as an arts and education consultant, as a musician and a photographer. The photos he donated to NPL are images of Newark public schools that he took while working for the district. The schools include Wequaic and Valesburg High Schools, Peshine Avenue School, Newton Street School, Science High, Westside High, and Arts High. Bill, welcome. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Okay. It's a pleasure to have you. Um, friends out there, and thank you and uh, Beth for allowing me to do this. Okay, great, great. So let's begin by talking about what led you to begin taking pictures. Uh, is this something you've done since you were a child? Uh, well, I, yes and no. Um, when I was a kid, I guess I was maybe eight or nine years old. Um, I was walking, I was coming home from church one Sunday. And uh, well, well, let me back up and say, so we lived on Quitman Street in Central Ward. And the church was Mount Calvary up on uh, Prince Street. And we, we were taught, my siblings, we would walk only on one side of the street. And that would be the side of, uh, as we were going up and down. And that would be the south side of Spruce Street from Quitman up to um, Prince Street. Well, one Sunday afternoon, being the wayward child that I was, I decided I was going to walk home on the north side of Spruce Street. And there was a drugstore there. And I stopped and looked in the window. I saw a camera. And I decided I wanted to have a camera. And um, I bought the camera. Well, actually, I was, you know, had a little like a job like Billy Holiday. I was scrubbing the steps in the apartment building where we lived, and I had a little money, so I bought this camera. And I took a few pictures, and as far as I know, only one picture uh, from that camera exists, and it's a selfie. Um, but from that point on, I didn't have an, another camera again until I was about maybe 27 or 28 years old. And it was really by accident that I became a, a photographer. And at the time, I was teaching at Wickwear High School. I had just finished uh, the, system, the semester before that spring, my master's at Hunter College, and I had a void. And I was on my way to, uh, after school to get to my car and drive home. And a buddy of mine worked in a uh, real estate office. And he said, would you give me a ride up to Livingston to Bamberger's um, to buy a camera? I said, sure, but why not? And we get there. and. I'm looking at these cameras and so yes, you could range finder. And I said, ah, since I'm um, uh, the advisor to the school newspaper and I can't get pictures like I want, I'll buy a camera. And I did. And then I was going to Ruben Brothers uh, drugstore there on uh, Chancellor Avenue. They would develop the film and, I would, you know, and it got to be very expensive. So I asked the, the fellow at school, Bob Polshel, who was another music teacher, um, who was a photographer, what do, did I need to start a dark room? So he told me, went downtown Newark to what used to be mall camera before your time. And I bought all of the stuff and I went home and I, I decided I was going to teach myself how to shoot and develop film. And it, it, there's a whole lot more, but we'll hold that for another time. But anyway, 
I'll just say that I developed my first role of film and it was a disaster and I laughed myself silly. And then I said, okay, I'll try again. So the second role was much better. <laughs> and that's the accident. And, and the rest of it just simply got out of control. And so what were you taking pictures of those in the early days? Okay, the, the early pictures, Wickwag High School. I was uh, mm -hmm. again uh, advising the school newspaper and I would just take the pictures of the football team because it was in the fall. And um, then I would take pictures around the school and that was it. And then it, it occurred to me that as a music teacher, in, in addition to teaching um, orchestra and stringed instruments, part of my responsibility was to teach what was called music foundations. And in the spring, I always did a unit on jazz. And I couldn't find pictures of jazz musicians. And I said, okay, I have a camera now. I'll start taking pictures of jazz musicians. And that's when it really got out of control really got out of control. So about 15, 20 cameras later, and all those file cabinets, here I am. <laughs> yeah, Bill, before we got started today, Bill was showing me the filing cabinets in the office behind him. I thought he was in a commercial office, but it's his basement office in his home. He's got all these cabinets behind him. I was very impressed. Um, so the jazz, let's talk a little bit about the jazz pictures. Um, where do you take these photos? Um, and you, it's been a long time, I guess, since that you've been taking these photos. I took my first jazz photographs, I'm going to say in January of 1974. And the first, well, there, there were two sessions. One was with a, a saxophonist called, um, named Robin Kenyatta. And the other was with um, a jazz bassist, Dr. Larry Ridley. Um, and so I just took the pictures. I, I asked um, Robin Kenyatta, and at that time I really had not taken any available light photographs because I, I, I had read someplace about, you know, you don't take pictures of jazz musicians with, with a flash. So, um, so I have these grainy photographs of Robin Kenyatta, and I have the grainy photographs of uh, Larry Ridley. Now, Larry, at the time, Dr. Ridley was, had created what I think is the, um, the prototype of all college jazz programs, uh, educate jazz education programs. And that was on the, um, the campus of um, um, the Pis I'm sorry, Piscataway campus of Rutgers Livingston. And um, so when I asked him about taking the pictures and I told him I was a bass player and we, you know, you know we hit it off really great. And he said, you know, I have a series uh, that I'm doing down at, at uh, Lucy Stone Hall. Why don't you come down and photograph the series? And it was on Tuesday night. So that following Tuesday, um, I was down there. And um, so somewhere, if you, if you look at my website, you'll see a whole bunch of pictures or a section called Jazz at Lucy Stone Hall. And that's another whole conversation right there about that. So. So that, that started in the mid 70s, then you were taking pictures. Right, that was in uh, 1974. Yeah, okay. And, um, well, WBGO factors in there someplace. Um, after just going around, and I actually also started shooting photographs of the Newark jazz musicians that, that I knew, uh, and I call it Newark jazz people. And then somewhere at 74, 75, somewhere in there, WBGO um, came on the scene as a jazz station. And anybody who's on this, this call now, uh, familiar with the New York Public Schools from prior to the jazz station, WBGO was the school's radio station. Um, but anyway, I, I had this body of photographs and I went in and, and I said, I take pictures of jazz musicians. Yeah, do you need me? And, uh, Bob Ottenhop was there and, and he bumped me off to somebody else and somebody else and I finally ended up talking to Doc Lauren Kirk and she looked at my photographs and then I started getting calls and I was photographing everything for WBGO at that time oh. for a whole bunch of years. <laughs> so that collection of photos, um, we have not had those donated to us. Are you planning to donate them anywhere, those photos? Yeah, why not? <laughs> 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 well, I was, I was wondering, I mean, I was, I, I don't know whether you've had discussions with the Jazz Institute at Rutgers Newark or, or other institutions. I was just curious whether you had donated those. No, everything Newark is coming to, is, is coming to you guys. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, yeah. And, nice. and 
everything to work. I, I point to the file cabinets. You and you, you're you're yeah. going to need a, a, a an additional room. <laughs> We're going to get need even more offsite storage. Okay, that's uh, exactly exactly. So uh, you mentioned you're a bass player. Are there any other instruments you play? Um, I, w I won't say yes. I'll say no. I, I play the bass. I'm, I'm the bass okay. player. Okay. okay. So what attracted you to teaching? You worked as a, you worked as a teacher uh, and an educational administrator for years. What attracted you to teaching? Um, an accident, the fact that, um, well, my original career goal, you're sitting down, right? Yeah. My original <laughs> career goal was to be a Newark police officer. And um, when I was in junior high school, what used to be Clinton Place Junior High School, it's now Science, uh, no, University High School. I had the opportunity to audition for Arts High School. I said, I'm going to Arts High School. I'm going to be, going to be a police officer. And when I graduated from junior high school, and, and that summer, the Newark Public Schools changed the district lines. And instead of me going to week work, I, was, I went to, to Southside, Malcolm X. Bass High School. There I met um, John Kopic, um, and. John Kopic is, is a member of that Kopic family. They were all educators and musicians. And he was a bass player. And he's heard me play. And he said, you're going to be my first all-state student. And he was close. And um, so I, I did that. Um, but I just kept playing bass. And when I graduated from, I did my undergraduate. Oh, I received a scholarship to Montclair State because I played the bass. And I said, oh, I'll get to the police academy. I'll get there. I'll get there. And I didn't. Um, so I started teaching, and then I started, uh, I joined a union uh, on a memorable evening. Um, that was an evening, well, actually, I joined a union before that, but the union president, Danny Hope, said, I want you to go over to Branchbrook Park, and I want you to listen to the Newark Symphony Orchestra and tell me if you can play the music or not. So I went across to, to, to the park, and... I heard the music and you know, I said, okay, I'll, I'll call Danny tomorrow and tell me I can do this. But that was the evening that the Newark Rebellion began. <laughs> so it's memorable. I, I, it's, and there's a photograph that I, in the, from the Star Ledger. But anyway, and I, I had joined the union. Then I kept getting phone calls to play. That's what I did. And then I found myself, oh, um, I joined, that was Local 16, that was uh, in Newark. And um, then I, um, I joined 802 in New York, so I was working in New York, and I, and I have a runny nose. So um, that's what I was doing. And I was teaching also. And so I was ideally, I think, ideally placed living in Newark and then Montclair, where I could just zip in and out of New York, and I can also zip up and down the turnpike of the parkway and, and perform in New Jersey. Mm, okay. <laughs> So, but you, uh, but you, you taught music to students. Uh, you taught, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you taught at Wequaik, huh, you mentioned. Uh, what other I taught at Um Well, when I first began teaching, I taught at, um, um, I had five schools, mm -hmm. uh, five elementary schools. Um, Monday was Peshine, where I eventually, be that was my first administrative job. Uh, Tuesday um, was in the West Ward at Alexander Street. Wednesday was all the way up in Valesburg at Lincoln. Thursday was back at, um, in the South Ward at what was then Bergen Street School. Now it's, well, what's left of it is William Brown Academy. And Friday I was at Charlton Street. And I did that for the first three years. And I had fun. I had great kids, great, great kids. And um, then I, did a job in Newark, a performing job with an orchestra, and there was a music teacher from Weekwick High School there, and he said, you know, we have a vacancy at Weekwick. Would you like to teach at Weekwick? I said, sure, why not? And that's, that's how I got, at Week, got to Weekwick High School. Okay. And I was there for 10 years, I think. Um, yeah, I'm thinking I was living in, in, in all the best, best of all possible worlds. Because I could, again, I could to, uh, could um, perform. Um, I could take pictures, and I could you know be a daddy to my son, um, and you know the whole ball of wax. Everything was right there in you know in front of me. Okay. 
Yeah. And you were you worked for the the Newark schools for about forty years. Is that right? Years, yeah, yeah. When, um, when did you retire? Um, twelve years ago. Seems like yesterday. It was twelve years ago. Uh, I finished up at the end of the o seven o eight school year. And I spent the last 21 years of, of uh, my career as, a, as an administrator, the last 10 as director of visual performing arts. Hmm. And I think, well, my parents would, would, be, would be especially happy, especially my dad, because he was a musician also, but he kept his day job like I did. Um, so I followed his, his lead. Um, and I actually, as a teacher of music, I did what he wanted him he won, but with four miles of feet, you know, or as he decided he would keep his job across the street from where you are, he was a financial analyst at um, the Veterans Administration. So, oh yeah, yeah just, just just down the street from us. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Oh, just down the street from us, I said, from the library. Right, yeah, right across the park. Yeah. So um, let's talk about the photos you donated to the library. Okay. okay. I'll show, I want to share my screen. I want to show people how to get to the digital archive and show them the photos in your collection. So I'm going to share the screen now. And it's there. Okay. okay, so this is the digital archive. It is um, uh, digital.npl.org is the address of it. And uh, to find collections, you can either go to Browse Collections, where they're listed by name. I believe Bill's collection is under B for Bill, um, not M for May. You can also browse collections um, up here. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enter his name in the search box, which I find the easiest way to get to collections. Bill May in quotes. Oh, okay. make sure you put a space in there. And enter. And it should be the first item that comes up. Yeah, there it goes. The Bill May Photograph Collection. That takes us to the main, the main page of Bill's collection. And I'm going to just uh, have to move my box over a little bit uh, and scroll down a little bit. Um, I am going to change the, uh, yeah, okay. I'll, yeah, okay, so here you have just, um, we can look at, I just wanna uh, click on a few of these while I ask Bill some kind of general questions. So these question, these photos that you took of the schools, um, Bill, uh, were they, were you paid for these photos? No, no, I, I did it because I wanted to and I, I enjoyed working with the young people. And let me also say that uh, these are actually um, scans from the photographs and not the negatives. So. Um, expect the negatives, okay? <laughs> okay, so the, okay, this, that, that's, uh, that's, in, yeah, yeah. Um, and these were, I guess, taken at uh, different times, like this one looks like it was um, maybe at the end of the marking period and, and could have been kids, uh, honor roll kids, uh, for whatever grade level this was. And this was at Peshine Avenue School. Okay, so you, um, oh, oh, sorry, that was not what I meant to do back. Okay, so um, it's kind of difficult maneuvering through these. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so uh, so the, um, now a lot of these photos, I was looking through them the other day, and a lot of them focus on, um, you know, musical performances. Uh, there's also sports uh, photos. There's um, academic um, uh, ceremonies, people awarded, uh, be, 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 people being awarded things. Did you make, were you um, trying to focus on the achievements of newer school students? Is that what you were trying to do? Exactly. Um, just the, 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 to recognize the, the, the students. Um, and in recognizing the students, we were able to get more parents to come in uh, because the parents had something uh, of, of a substance to say, oh, well, in addition to the report card that said, you know, your, your child made the honor roll, there was a photograph. So these photographs uh, were actually posted in the school after, after each marking period. And it gave the, the youngsters, the students, a sense of pride and, and achievement that they, it was somebody. Um, and it did a great a bit, I think, to uh, uh, improve the morale of the students. They, they, 
you know, and, and, and <laughs> I'm looking, I see my, my old car parked on the, on the sidewalk over there. But um, oh, right there. No, the one behind it, the gray <laughs> this one. This one, this one. No, the one in the middle. Yeah, but I mean, it yeah. just gave them a sense of achievement and a sense of recognition. They were proud, um, the teachers were proud and, and their parents were proud. So it just, just, uh, just something I felt like doing. It just, just seemed like the natural thing to do. And how did you display these photos when you, when you were taking them? Where were they displayed? Who saw them? Well, you would come right into the main building past the uh, security guard. This is a, one of the parents who was also a, a crossing guard. But mm -hmm. uh, they would be posted on, bullet, on a bulletin board right outside the main office. Um, um, you know, unframed, but they were there for everyone to see. And because we didn't have a school newspaper um, at Peshan because it was an elementary school. Um, but we did have the bulletin board and, you know, the students would just enjoyed seeing themselves. And so, then all the parents, I mean, of course, they would you know, be happy to see their, their children being recognized for their achievement. Oh, sure, sure. So these were not in a publication then, they were basically on bulletin boards displayed. Correct. For They're right, right. In, students right to say right parents. Right yes. Okay. What was dress up day? What is that? Um, that was a day when the kids could just dress up and dress in their, I guess, their Sunday best and just come to school, just like a special day. Um, so we, again, we wanted to build on um, their self-esteem. You know, hey, you look great, you, you dress nicely, but let's take a picture, you know, kind of thing. And um, they felt good. They were recognized as individuals. Yeah. Right. So you also took pictures of people's, uh, of students' art, as this is uh, an example of a work of art from uh, the Ridge Street School. Mm -hmm. uh, That's, so these, okay. This is from 2003, it's not long before you retired. Right. This was when I was director of Visual Performing Arts. Um, I had gotten to, into the habit of carrying um, a small digital camera um, with me. I don't, I don't have it with me now, but it was so small, not much bigger than a, than a cell phone. And I would always photograph the work um, and would have it. Um, okay. All right. And so we used some of the work was used for various uh, competitions and exhibitions. So again, that was another reason I photographed the artwork. So um, how did the schools change in the years that you worked there? During the years I worked there, or since I, yeah. I left? During, during, the years, during the years you worked there, what kind of changes did you see? Well, I, well first of all, there was, there was a tremendous change, a significant change in the student population, as well as the instructional uh, uh, staff and, and the administrative staff. Um, I go back to um, when I first started in about 1968, there had been um, a lawsuit by uh, African-American uh, educators in Newark um, who were certified as administrators. Um, and then we were getting, um, they were getting, getting promotions. And uh, there was a court case, and the uh, African American um, uh, complaint was sustained. And so we, you, Newark finally began to get um, African American educators. And what makes that such, um, it, it may seem odd, but it, even more odd was that prior to the middle 60s, the only African American administrator that had been in the Newark Public Schools was James Miller Baxter, and that was in 1864. So we're talking about a hundred years within, um, before there was another African American administrator in a district that was predominantly African American. And he was the principal of what was called the Colored School, too. In the, the Colored School, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so he it was basically a position that was kind of reserved for an African-American person, uh, more or less, right? Correct. And there, there, there were others before him, but uh, not necessarily with the title of principal. Mm -hmm. Just looking at some of these, these are uh, great photos of the kids that you, that you took. So this is Arts High School. Do you remember these? Uh, oh, the Arts High School Omega Jazz Ensemble at the Newark Museum. Mm-hmm. Uh, were you an advisor to this group? No, uh, I was still director of visual performing arts. The gentleman 
in the, uh, <laughs> the mustard colored suit, uh, Dr. Oscar Petty was the advisor. This was, this was his baby at, at Arts High School. He created this jazz band at Arts High School. Oh. And um, he, he, he's no longer with the Newark Public Schools. In another, he's in another district now. But Oscar was a, a professional, he's a professional musician and oboist. Um, but he, had, he created the band and it, um, quite good, quite a good band. It's a picture of Mayor, Mayor James, Sharp James at uh, Science High in, uh, well, we don't have a date on this, but uh, sometime during the period when he was mayor, certainly. It's yes. In the mid 80s and the, uh, in the mid, um, uh, t about 2006. Um, so do you, um, the, 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 the photos that you donated to us, do they fall within a certain time period or are they in the entire time that you were working in the schools or were they in a specific time period after that? Here's another picture they, of Mayor James with a bunch of students. With, I think the ones you have begin with me at Peshine and continue uh, through when I was uh, Director of Visual Performing Arts. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I just want to back up to that photograph you just had there because. Oh, sure. I yeah. got to bring that up again. If I got to make sure I get the right one. Okay. I think it's this one, right? Yeah, that's, that's close enough. The mayor came to the school because of these four young men. Um, he saw them outside coming from Penn Station. He was with his, his driver and they were acting silly. I'll put it that way. They were acting silly. And he stopped and gave them a lecture. And when he found out they were students at Science High School, he said, I'll see you guys there. And he came by on that following Monday and he, um, he knew who the students were. He had taken down their names and I called them down and we, he, he continued his conversation about their behavior and how they should be respectful, especially as Science High School students and so on and so on. Um, I think only, well, three of them are still, the young man to, to uh, Mayor James Wright passed, but the other three are still around. The one to his left, um, he's one of my Facebook friends. First name is Corey, I forget his last name. Um, but yeah, and the, uh, the young man in the maroon sweater, <laughs> his dad and I uh, went to high school together. Oh. So, so really, they were really, really good guys, you know, but they just went a silly night, that's all. And there, that's him too. That's the one you, 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 you right, there he is, yes. went to high school uh, with his father. Okay. And I, if, if, if Dr. Bolden is on this call, she, she knows who he is. Oh. <laughs> okay. And more student art here. Mm -hmm. um, Newton, this is a picture of Newton Street School. Do you... Uh, Again, Mayor James and um, Donald Payne, the late and, Donald Payne. And the Omega Jazz Ensemble. Okay. Right. And Dr. Petty is quite a dresser. Oh. Another picture from Newton Street School. Is that a, it looks like a parent and a child? Yes, at an exhibition okay. and exhibition. What is this? A piece of art, is that what that is? Mm -hmm. oh, it's sculpture. Yeah, made of uh, just regular, that little gray clay that we, um, in the school, standard clay, school level clay. Now you also sent me some photos a couple of weeks ago and I wanted to show people those photos. Uh, there's, we're not necessarily part of this collection, but you have, they were, you, um, you chose them, I guess, for a reason. Let me just click on a couple of these and. Okay. Oh, oops, oh, I guess I, all right. I just bring that up. There we go. Okay. Well, so, Bill Clinton. Yeah. We, we, um, I was charged with the responsibility by Dr. Bolden to, to really to build the overall arts program, but specifically the music program, instrumental music. And just so happened that at the same time that happened when um, um, VH1, and Bob Morrison was working with uh, VH1, then he's now the executive director of the New Jersey Arts Education Partnership. He contacted me and said, you know, this is VH1, we give musical instruments to schools. Uh, how would you like to participate? Yeah, well, why not? It's free, you know, just give us the instrument. This ceremony, what you're looking at here, was like a culminating event. 
And Newark was one of several districts around the nation that VH1 had provided like about you know, $600,000 worth of musical instruments, not just in Newark, but overall. And um, so we were the first district that actually completed the whole round of, of the, the ceremony or the process. And, and um, at this event, of course, Bill Clinton was there and Dr. Petty um, and Il Meco Jazz and some of So this was just, um, we're taking pictures. And I was taking pictures. Uh, I never got a picture with, the, with uh, Mr. Clinton, but everybody else did. Uh, mm -hmm. So there was a big, big to do uh, on stage and my, uh, so named Mariah Carey and some other people were there and all of our local politicians, Democrats were certainly there, uh, uh, there at the event. So this was the culminating event. Okay. Another picture. This is, um, I don't have the description. I'm just, I'm on full screen. So I'm just. Okay. This is, um, this is Camden Middle School. Um, Mrs. Nelms, Anzella Nelms was the principal there at the time. And if you wanted to see a well-run school, um, you, you would come to Camden Middle to see Mrs. Nelms at work. But these students, um, I think they had written an original play. So they're all working on the script for the for the play, I think, and there was a name they called themselves the young, um, the young sophisticated or something. But uh, so that's what's happening here. Okay. Right. And this, uh, somebody picking up, holding a child holding up a, an old Newark Evening News uh, paper long after the paper went out of business. They, uh, long, long and long after, yeah. yeah. Um, there was the, the in the garden of the Newark Museum of Art, in that corner, there's an old brick, a, a steel stone brick uh, schoolhouse. That schoolhouse originally sat on Elizabeth, on a corner of Elizabeth Avenue and uh, Chancellor Avenue, I believe. And it's Newark's first real schoolhouse. And when that schoolhouse was moved from its location on Elizabeth and Chancellor Avenues, and relocated to the um, museum garden, there was a, um, a time capsule uh, included in there. So they put up the cornerstone and we opened that day in November, maybe of 2007. And these students were all from Chancellor Avenue Elementary School back about 2007. So what you see here, a, a, at least well up that box up by the young man's jacket, the Newark Evening News, the book, those were items that were in that time capsule. That, and and that, would, have been in, that would have been in the late 30s, I believe 38, 37 or 38 that they moved. I, I think so, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this is, I love this photo. I think this is a terrific photo. That's a, a Geraldine Talmadge. And Geraldine might be on this call. Um, Geraldine, just, just an enthusiastic young lady and she came to Wehoek maybe not as a freshman, but maybe as a sophomore. And she immediately um, just involved herself in everything that was going on in the school. And as you can see, she's a, a, drum, um, a drum major or whatever or something. No, she wasn't a drum major. But she was happy at this point because she had come to us from New York City and she could never get to a football game and she couldn't become part of the, the color guard. That's what it was. So at, he or she is now in, in the color guard. I didn't find that out until um, years later. That was, you know, one of her goals. So, and she just happened to have this, this flag and she just has that enthusiasm. And she's a, she's a teacher. I'm not sure she's teaching in Newark now, but she is a teacher. Yeah, her enthusiasm definitely comes across in that photo. Yeah. Oh, this was a, uh, yeah, this was a... Um, this was a video. You know? It's a short video, do you know? I, it's about a minute. Oh, it's only about a minute. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't know whether you have the audio. Probably not. This is, again, part of what um, Dr. Bolden charged me with, and that is to get marching bands in all of, of the comprehensive high schools, and we were successful. And that young man there, Keyshawn Mayo, um, was actually about maybe eight years old. That's why he looks so short. <laughs> uh, 
Um, okay. Incredible energy, very bright. Um, when he gr graduated from Belmont Runyon Elementary School, he went to Science High School. From Science High School, he went on to join the Marines and then get a, a, a diploma. So he's working um, in computers up in upstate New York now. Oh. And, and the band director, you saw him in a white hat and white jacket, and that was Hassan Williams, um, an incredible uh, teacher. Um, and he reached out to the, all of the elementary schools that have fed into Malcolm X Shabazz and started teaching them instrumental music and, had, and they joined the band. And that's how he uh, discovered Keyshawn. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is um, well, Melissa Walker. And uh, jazz people might recognize the name of Melissa Walker. She has uh, something called Jazz House Kids. And it's probably the premier uh, jazz education program in, in the nation. She works right out of Montclair, uh, New Jersey. Um, and um, quite a, quite a, a vocalist, um, an incredible businesswoman, and she's the wife of uh, jazz bassist uh, Christian McBride. And here she is at a Ridge Street School. Um, WBGO presented um, Melissa and a, one of their Jazz for Children programs uh, run by Darthorn Kirk. And I heard her one Saturday and I said, hey, you know, we, we'd like to have you do this in, in, in the rural public schools. So we created a series uh, for, for maybe beginning in maybe 2002, uh, all the way through, well, no, before that, um, through my retirement. And it's, I think she's still doing some things in the district. And um, uh, very, a great program. We, we went to all, well, not all, but went to almost every elementary school in Newark um, where she would present her program. The, the big kid sitting back there is um, a bass player who's, uh, um, his name just slipped right out of my head. Yeah, but he's, he lives in West Orange. Yeah, the big kid, very good bass player. And he's gonna shoot me for not remembering his name. <laughs> ah. <laughs> this, is, um, this is one of my creations. People used to, well, I don't know what they do now, let me, let me rephrase that. Uh, there's a, a sense that music teachers and art teachers are prep teachers. They are people we send our kids to so we, as a classroom, teachers can go and have our break. My goal was to say, oh, no, 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 no. These teachers of music and the arts, um, these arts educators are all professionals. and. Every one of these musicians you see in this picture, they're all professional musicians who happen to teach in the North Public Schools. Um, uh, you know, I look right in the middle. David Bram is probably a name that's familiar to a lot of people on, on, on this, um, uh, this call right now. Because David, an incredible uh, musician. Joaquin Diaz, another um, a, a Grammy Award mu musician. Um, <laughs> The fellow next to Joaquin is, uh, you know, he joined the army. Um, there's Dave Frick, who's played in many of like a Motown band. He's up in the back, the big guy with the, with the gray mustache. In front of him is Ronaldo. Um, I forgot Ronaldo's last name. But anyway, Ronaldo was, you know, he played Tito Puente. Um, as Jim Shealy, who was- Is that Ronaldo player. there? I'm sorry? Is this Ronaldo here? That's Ronaldo, yes, I'm sorry. I, I, I talk very fast. No, go ahead, please, go ahead. <laughs> but these are all musicians. Um, I see uh, uh, the late Steve Christian who played with the New Jersey Symphony. Um, he's right in the back row. You see uh, the two ladies, uh, Linda Koch, the late Linda Koch, um, and then, um, uh oh, she's gonna shoot me. But anyway, that's Steve Christian. Um, then there's Dennis Argo. Robin Corley, who was with a group uh, who played with Mo, he played with Motown. Um, um, uh oh, uh oh. And he sent me a note today with the mustache on the end next uh, behind Bradford Hayes. Oh, Bradford Hayes is one of our local rock dealers. Um, oh my goodness. Uh, but anyway, he's a great, great musician. Uh, whenever we had our Newark Jazz students playing at the festival, um, I mean, it's just just a great group of professional musicians who taught in the schools. The very first time they played, 
uh, performed, I should say, was this, this September, we're looking at in this photograph, this is outside of NJ Pack. And Dr. Bowen would have at the beginning of each school year before the students came on board, um, she would have a convocation. So this year, this band played and I found out later on that there were some grumblings in, in, in the audience uh, about, you know, Dr. Bowen can afford to hire a professional band of jazz musicians, but we can't get a, a pay increase. But that quickly, that rumbling quickly stopped um, when I started to introduce the musicians when I knew everybody's name. And I would say, uh, you know, David Bram, George Washington Carver School, and I would say Joaquin Diaz, um, Branchbrook School. Then the teachers in the audience realized these are our these are our colleagues. I mean, yeah. the stock rose tremendously. The, the, the self esteem of the musicians, the respect of um, everyone in the district as to who these people are. They're not just people who are sitting around and you know bothering you and pulling kids out of your classroom. These are real, real first class musicians. And, and we, proved that, we, we proved that very quickly. Tremendous respect. A, a couple of years later, the same band was the opening act for at Newark Symphony Hall, was the opening band, I should say, um, for the Dizzy Gillespie uh, All-Star Alumni Band. And Gary Walker was there from WBGO, and he was like, whoa, these are Newark teachers? Said, yep, yes, they are. Yeah. Great, great. Oh, oh Peshine again. Oh. Okay. Um, right. Okay, one thing I want to say about this photograph, so you're right, to, uh, in, the, in the, the blue top, white collar, that's Joicky Floyd. Joicky is a teacher in the Newark Public Schools now. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, I'm not sure about the rest. Uh, this is Peshine again. Um, reading is fundamental. And again, we, we were contacted at Peshine um, by Dorothy Nywa from PCCI. She's no longer with PCCI. But Dorothy set up this, so she arranged with us to have this book giveaway. And this was a a classroom, we actually use it as a, as a book room, adjacent to my office, my vice principal's office. We set up the tables, put the books down, and, and by grade level, the students came in and on, on this day, um, at the, during the lunch period, we had the quietest lunch period of, of the entire year because all of the kids were sitting there reading books and eating. And there was no talking, they might, nobody wanted to go to the playground, they wanted to finish the book. <laughs> Yeah, so that's great. Right. Yeah. Yep. This uh, is um, writing a date. Description how to write a date, I guess. Yeah. Well, it's it's writing a date <laughs> because this was Seventh uh, Avenue Elementary School, and it was being demolished. If you look on the left side, you can see the jagged wall there. Oh yeah. 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 So this was the, the, the demolition of Seventh Avenue School, and I was out on one of my. Um, morning uh, shoots in Newark. Um, and I drove down, I said, hey, this looks, like, this looks good. I think I'll take a picture of this. So this is a school that's being demolished. Hmm. Okay. It's right over, um, not far from you. Oh. Uh, yeah, but it's not, no, I'm sorry, not far from the library on 7th Avenue by the Colony Departments. Oh, okay, over there, sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And here's uh, Mayor James again. Okay, this is when, uh, uh, he was Councilman James of uh, the South Ward. And the gentleman you, in the middle, you probably recognize is Dr. Ralph uh, Abernathy, uh, who was the right-hand man of Dr. Uh, Martin Luther King. And I have no clue what brought uh, Abernathy to Weequayak that day. Um, but uh, to Abernathy's left is uh, Claude Bay, and uh, principal of, uh, of, of Weequayak High School at the time. And this was in the library, and um, and I don't I don't know how um, well Sharp James became aware that uh, Abernathy was there, but he he showed up, and you know you make sure you get all the politicians every time. As a matter of fact, <laughs> later on I ended up maybe I shouldn't say it, but I ended up photographing two campaigns for Sharp. Uh, the first one was when he 
ran for a councilman at large. And he had been South Ward councilman. And then he ran for councilman at large four years. And four years later, I, I photographed his campaign for um, uh, his run for mayor. His first run and successful run oh. for mayor. Uh, okay. Huh. okay. This is a, some kind of sculpture? Yeah, yeah. Um, this was during a period when I was uh, interim principal at Arts High School. I was interim principal as well as director of visual performing arts. That's another whole story altogether, um, simultaneously. And I was interim principal from January 2005 through uh, June 2005. And we had a lot of uh, just damaged, unplayable instruments. And, um, and since I was responsible, I, I brought them over. And it's right in the lobby um, at, at our side right now. And, and this is sitting upstairs at the top of the stairs uh, uh, of the auditorium. But now, as well, the last time I saw it, was sitting in the main lobby as soon as you walk into Arts High School. But this is a, a student sculptor. Yeah, it's a really interesting. In this photo, I'm not quite sure what this is. Okay. Um, this, this is simply the students at Wickwerk High School uh, entering the building. And you, you have this kind of a mob scene because this, we were at the point now where it became necessary, not just Newark, but nationwide, for a security check coming into the schools. And um, so the students are coming in, you know, in an orderly fashion. They, you know, maybe look, you know, scattered here. Um, so they come in, they walk through the metal detector, and then they go on to you know, their business and school. So I was, well, the music department at Weekwick at that time was on the third floor in, on the front side of the building, Chancellor Avenue. And I looked out and saw this, and I thought, well, I'll take a picture. And that's, that's what you're looking at. One, oops, one more. And as I said, you know, these are all scans, well, not this one, but everything we've looked at so far is a scan from a negative. A photograph, it was, or it is. And part of the <laughs> getting bands together, um, for all of, all of the comprehensive high schools. And we, we, we marched in the Columbus Day Parade and the, the kids from Wickwick um, are in the orange and brown, of course. And this band, when you see in the uh, blue uniforms, they were from Italy. They were so impressed with the Wickwick band and their whole routine and their playing and everything. And Michael Page was the uh, director of the band of Wickwick. Um, they wanted to have a picture taken with the band. And this young man in the middle with the sousaphone was actually a student at, um, at Pesheim you know, years before, and he remembered me from, from that. And last, well, no, this year, he actually ran for the Newark Board of Ed, um, Philip Wilson. So. Okay. Let's see if there's, uh, I'm just gonna stop the share now. I'm going to see if there were any questions. Um, Okay, so uh, so I, I let's see if we have any. I have to go up now. <laughs> Put your question. We were busy talking. I couldn't see the. Um, <laughs> so I go back up to the beginning. Okay. Okay. Someone was asking if the recording of this um, interview will be accessible, and Beth answered yes. It will be on our YouTube and also on our Facebook. A few people said hello to you, Rosalind Nickel, Joyce Harley, um, and now Jean Garrison's. I, Garrison says, I know, now I know where to find you, Bill. Um, okay. um, Joyce Harley makes a comment. Bill and Dwight Carter did an exhibition of their photographs of black women in the arts. Yes, the yes. Sixth County chapter of the Lynx 15 years ago. Uh, the exhibition was mounted at St. Philip's Academy and it was outstanding. Mm -hmm. Hope Bill will share stories about some of the photos he contributed to the exhibit. So do you remember that exhibit, Bill? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I remember more. Yeah. yeah. Um, and as a matter of fact, the photograph of me that you use on the flyer for this, um, uh, Dwight took that photograph in, in January of 2008. Oh, okay. Great photographer, great photographer. Okay. Oops. 
So how did you uh, archive all of your pre-digital photographs? Someone, uh, someone is asking. It must be a task to locate a specific image you were searching for. Um, some years ago, I started a database. And so what I do to look for a particular photograph, I go directly to, to the database to see what file it's in. And um, that's how I find it. Then with the film, I go over here to my trusty Epson that you can't see scanner and I scan that. Um, eventually I um, will, I will scan or will have scanned uh, the entire uh, net film collection. And that will be available down at the, the New Jersey room of no public library. <laughs> The, the uh, it'll be your collection. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, Gary Soretsky uh, says, could Bill discuss when he shot in color and when in black and white? Uh, well, early on, it was um, and it was an experiment because I was shooting all black and white, and uh, again, Ruben Brothers Drugstore they had the photography department they were developing, and then I started developing my own. Um, and then I said, okay, well, let's see what color film looks like. What, what, what can I do? And that's looks like that. And um, so after that, it really depended upon um, uh, the activity. And of course, shooting digital is, is color uh, unless you make it otherwise. But early on, and I was also doing a wedding, so that was definitely color. Okay. Um... What, Bill, what are the stories you endeavor to capture or tell through your lens? I think we talked a little bit about that, but do you have a, uh, another a more general answer to that? Well, I have to just tell you, I mean, overall, I was just having fun. Um, I, doing what I was doing as an educator um, and you know, performing, I mean, it was all, it was all fun. And in, in my last few months with the district, when anyone asked me, um, you know, how did I feel about retiring? And I said, well, if you, if you love what you do, you never have to work a day in your life. And I, I enjoyed it. I had, fun. there was nothing else to do but have fun. Yeah, okay. Great, great. That's it. <laughs> Michelle Alexander says that Mr. May is one of the reasons why I became an art educator in Newark. Thank you for the opportunity, she says. Uh, oh, well, oh, yes, Michelle Alexander, yes. Okay. Not the poet, but the artist, visual okay. artist. Um, there was a district-wide project whereby each school had small groups of students photographing given themes in their community. An NPS, an NPS book was then created and published. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. That was a Pam Morgan. Pam Morgan um, um, came up with that idea. She uh, worked through Dr. Bolden and through my office, as, um, uh, Office of Visual Performing Arts. And we, well, that was one, it was Pam, we did that one. Um, and then we did one earlier, actually it was in 1987, uh, Mansa Musa uh, did A Day in Life, A Day in the Life of Newark. That was, that was another one. But that was the first one, but Pam did one several years later, well, more than several years, maybe 10, 15 years later. So those were the two that, that happened during my watch. Somebody says, Dr. Petty is in East Orange School District. He pays homage to Bill for his leadership. Yes, yes. Dr. Petty is, is, is well, actually he's a former student. He was a student at Peshine when I taught there. Um, and, and, and that is an, an, it's an earned doctorate. He, he um, earned a doctorate from Rutgers University, a doctorate. In, so I, I give him his props every time. And I think you talked about the diva difference. That was the, uh, the exhibit that you worked on. Um, does your collection right. include those incredible photos of Quitman Street in the old neighborhood? Um, I think they're asking that. Um, that's Dr. Berg. That's from the, those yeah, photographs yeah. on Quitman Street. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we, we have those, yeah, that's, th those are also on our digital archive, the Berg photos. And, and my, my brother Gary, when we moved from Whitman Street, he was so young, he had very little memory of uh, that building we lived in on Whitman Street. And when he saw that uh, photograph of that building on the corner of Whitman and Struz, he was very excited. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I think Gary's, I guess he's still on, his, on the call. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, he did. He, he left and then came back, I believe. Um, well, thank you, Bill, uh, for joining us today and for sharing these wonderful photos and for donating. 
uh, them to the Newark Public Library for researchers to use and enjoy. And thank you to everyone who tuned in today. For information on other Newark Public Library virtual programs, check out our calendar at npl.org slash calendar. Have a good day, everyone. Be safe. And thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Tom and Beth.